Uh, Roger Stone was just indicted. Now we see that there was a criminal conspiracy to commit fraud to elect Donald Trump and Mike Pence as president and vice president. Is it possible, if there's any lawyers listening to me right now, particularly if you are familiar with constitutional law, you know, there, there is a, there's a doctrine or practice or whatever the appropriate word is that, that says that when somebody commits a fraud and is convicted of that fraud, that, that the fruits of that fraud are taken away from them. Right? I mean, you know, it's very clear, right? You, you rip somebody off, um, they get their money back, and it comes out of your pocket. So if Donald Trump and Mike Pence are in the White House as a consequence of a clear fraud, the one that apparently involved the foreign government as well, Russia in this case, if they're in office as a consequence of a fraud, is it possible that Hillary Clinton or the Clinton campaign could sue at the Supreme Court alleging fraud and asking that they be installed in the White House by way of taking away the fruit of that fraud from Donald Trump. Now, I, you know, I realize this is like really reaching out there, but I'm just saying, I, it seems to me like this might work. If, if, you know, if, if you have thoughts on this, if you have an opinion, let us know. It is Anything Goes Friday. Whatever you want to talk about, you know, feel free to give us a shout. Um, a, a couple of data points that I want to share with you about Roger Stone and all this stuff. October 7th was the day that WikiLeaks first did their document dump on Hillary Clinton's, October 7th, 2016, on Hillary Clinton's emails. It's also the day that the Access Hollywood tape was released. I do not think that's a coincidence. This horrible news about Donald Trump comes out. He's bragging about grabbing women by their crotch. And within hours, WikiLeaks releases all this information that Roger Stone had predicted. In fact, Roger Stone later claimed credit for having correctly predicted it would be October 7th. Right. Okay, in addition, yesterday, uh, Claire, McCann, Claire McCaskill just kind of laid out Donald Trump is lying. Uh, um, and, and, uh, and Donald Trump, you know, I mean, he just flat out lied yesterday. It's, 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 it's pretty amazing, really. The, uh, you know, he said that the reason why the, uh, that six senators, six Republican senators, voted with the Democrats to reopen the government, that the reason why that happened, according to Donald Trump, is that, is that they wanted hurricane relief. Remember this? I mean, he came right out and said this. Oh, yeah, there were six uh, Republicans who voted with the Democrats because they wanted hurricane relief. Those Republican senators, as Claire McCaskill pointed out, were from Alaska. Where was the hurricane in Alaska? Colorado. Tennessee, Utah, Maine, and Georgia. Uh, so, you know, is he going to be held to account for this lie? So, you know, what do we do with that? I mean, that's that's pretty uh, astonishing. So. So, you know, what's the deal with this? Uh, other news. I mean, there, there's just a pile of stuff here I want to go through real quickly. And we are, by the way, if you're trying to call in, we're having to, uh, to reboot our entire phone system here. So you're gonna, if you're on hold, you're going to get dumped. If you're calling in, you won't be able to get through. Just try again in about four minutes because right now we're rebooting everything. Um, apparently had a Comcast problem overnight. So Trump. This Andy Borowitz, this is hysterical. A furious Donald Trump told reporters on Friday morning that it was a total disgrace that the Federal Bureau of Investigation had apparently not been affected by the government shutdown. See, Trump apparently thought that, you know, the shutdown put the FBI out of He says, you have people across the country in national parks and places like that who are not at work, and somehow the FBI is working around the clock. I think that's a total disgrace. 
Let's say you were trying to leave the country in a hurry with your family. Would the FBI be at the airport to stop you? What good is this shutdown anyway? That's Borowitz, of course, in the New Yorker um, satire. But, uh, you know, meanwhile, there's just a bunch of fascinating stuff around this. And, and, the, and the shutdown as well. You know, yesterday was the day that uh, Wilbur Ross said, oh, gee, I, you know, why, why can't these government workers simply get a loan? I mean, you know, obviously, Wilbur Ross, he's worth billions of dollars. It, you know, he's never, he's never actually had the, the experience of being a working class person. And then, and then uh, uh, the, the other, uh, oh, what was it? What, what's his name? The other uh, Trump economic advisor, Kudlow, Larry Kudlow. Larry Kudlow comes out and he says, uh, you know, well, people are showing up to work without pay out of loyalty to Donald Trump. Yeah, and then Laura, Laura Trump goes on TV and she says, well, you know, we understand that you guys are hurting, but this is really important for the future of your children and grandchildren. And this morning at LaGuardia Airport at 10 a.m. Neil Skinner, okay, cool. Uh, and this morning at 10 a.m. at LaGuardia, they, uh, they shut down the... Uh, they, they did a ground stop. You can't, in other words, you, you know, nobody can take off, nobody can land for an hour from 10 to 11. And now there's a ground delay in effect, and there's also ground delays in effect at Newark and Philadelphia International Airports. So, you know, ha have we reached a tipping point here with regard to air traffic control? Are they saying, okay, you know, we're not here, be out of loyalty to Donald Trump? They, they said that these ground stops are because they don't have the staffing to make sure everything's safe. Uh, meanwhile, Steve Bannon appears in this uh, indictment. The, the Trump campaign appears in the indictment over a dozen times in this indictment of Roger Stone today. And Steve Bannon uh, appears in the indictment. Uh, he was the chairman of the campaign starting in August of 2016. Keep in mind, September, October 7th is not only the day that, that the Access Hollywood tape hit the news, but it's also the day that the WikiLeaks uh, of the Clinton campaign of John Podesta's emails uh, earlier, I'd said it was uh, Hillary Clinton's emails. It was John Podesta's emails. That was October 7th. And Stone had, had published this tweet saying it's, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, Podesta's time in the barrel. Let's not forget, though, that there was another tweet from Roger Stone about somebody's time in the barrel. This was after Al Franken grilled Jeff Sessions in committee, Senator Al Franken and got Jeff Sessions to admit that he had had contacts with Russia and things like that, and, and uh, you know, he revealed all those conflicts. So Sessions then had to recuse himself as a consequence of Al Franken's grilling. And once he recused himself, then uh, you know, Rosenstein had no choice but to appoint a special counsel. He appointed Robert Mueller. Stone was clearly PO'd about this. The Guardian has a piece about this. Uh, Tommy Carsetti is uh, blogging about it over at DU. And so Roger Stone says, sends out a tweet saying, Al Franken's time in the barrel is coming. And shortly thereafter, allegations of sexual harassment against Franken show up, centering, you know, as, as, as Tommy Carsetti writes at DU, centering on a decades old joke photograph and a few other vague accusations. Did Roger Stone engineer the destruction of Al Franken as well? Oh, and the, the Trump administration has figured out, they're, they're trying to figure out a way out of this. They, uh, this thing with the air marshals and the, and, the, and the TSA, while they couldn't find money for the air marshals, they're going to issue 2018 performance awards. They're all gonna get nice little marks and letters and things in their employee files. But they did find money to give a full week's worth of pay to all the uh, TSA guys. So if you are a TSA employee and you were working back in December of last year, uh, when the shutdown started, December 22nd, if you worked that last week of the year, you will today get apparently a full week's pay out of the four that you're owed. And so this is, you know, this is the Trump administration's efforts to kind of minimize the damage. And meanwhile, meanwhile, I mean, there's just so much going on here. Meanwhile, meanwhile, yesterday, the Republican National Committee's resolution group passed a resolution canceling the Republican primary, saying, 
We're with Trump all the way. Trump's going to be the guy. Now, it still has to pass the full RNC. But the committee that recommends these things said the RS, RNC Resolution Committee just voted unanimously to, for undivided support for Donald Trump and his effective presidency. And if the RNC ratifies this, what that means is that there will be no, um, no, oppo no opposition to Donald Trump. Or if somebody does come, you know, if, like you know, Mitt Romney comes out and says, well, yeah, I'm going to you know, go against him, uh, Mitt Romney will not get the endorsement of the Republican Party. And the Republican Party will not sponsor things like debates and stuff like that. So it's getting real interesting here on a whole bunch of different levels. We'll pick up your calls, your thoughts on all of this right after the break. It's 17 minutes and change past the hour.